CTV News at 6 with Hudson Mack. Good evening. The provincial government is throwing a lifeline to BC Ferries. It's going to provide nearly $80 million in new ferry subsidies over five years, but it warns that there'll be a cost, significant adjustments to service for coastal communities. The government's making major changes to the Coastal Ferries Act, with ridership at a 20-year low and trying to keep ferry fares from going too much higher. The province says it will pay more, but it's told ferries in no uncertain terms it must reduce its costs, and that will affect you. CTV's Andrew Johnson has the story. Will we soon be paying more for less on BC ferries? To get costs under control, there will be service cuts on major and minor routes. The government wants BC ferries to find $15 million in immediate savings and another $30 million in service reductions and trade-offs over the next four years. Well, I know you cannot continue to operate a BC ferry system with routes running at less than 30% capacity. So what we are going to do is go out and engage the public very quickly. The thing is, is that ridership is dropping on BC ferries. And um, its ridership is dropping in, in Washington State ferries, too. It's, it, you know, people just aren't spending the same kind of money traveling that they once did. The government is giving more power to the ferry commissioner to oversee the cost of providing ferry service, and he will look at what dollars are needed to keep each route running. The commissioner will also have a say in capital expenditures. The company has $2.5 billion worth of capital plans over the next two performance terms. And that, of course, is adding significantly to fare costs and the affordability of the system. And I think that that oversight is a new tool and a, a very significant one. Ferry CEO Mike Corrigan says he thinks the province has come up with a reasonable and balanced approach for what he calls an essential service. Everybody has to come to the plate with something, so we have to have a financially sustainable ferry system. And, um, you know, I'd like to thank Minister Lextrom and his staff for what they were able to accomplish today. It certainly isn't nirvana, but given the world that we live in today, it's very reasonable. Corrigan says the greatest opportunity to cut service and affect the smallest number of passengers is on late night sailings. He says many of those ferries are sailing with very few people on board and many staff are being paid overtime. But selling this new change in direction could be difficult. Most passengers CTV News spoke to this afternoon at Swartz Bay are not willing to accept service cuts even if it means lower fares. No, no. I think that you still need to accommodate the people that live there and visitors. Absolutely not. We've got the most diminished service that I've seen in 32 years that I've lived on the Gulf Islands. Well, I think the people on the southern Gulf Islands would want to know, well, what are you proposing to be in terms of fewer? The province maintains the people will have their say. Ferry-dependent communities will be consulted before decisions are made about changes to service. Fire! Judging by fiery ferry protests of the past, the consultation process might be a rough ride. Andrew Johnson, CTV News, Victoria.